Welcome to our recording on the non-residential certificate of installation forms for the 2022 Energy Code cycle using the Virtual Compliance Assistant. We'll be overviewing the compliance document pre documentation process of the 2022 Code cycle, concentrating on the certificate of installation forms. Look at what methods are available for the certificate of installation forms in this Code cycle, and concentrating on the Virtual Compliance Assistant as a means to produce these forms utilizing a walkthrough example of a lighting alteration project of an existing building. These requirements are going to apply for projects that are subject to the 2022 code cycle, which applies for projects that apply for permit as of January 1st of 2023. If they applied for permit previous to January 1st of 2023, they would be subject to the 2019 code cycle. Now, as we're designing a project, we're determining what is it that is going to meet the energy code. Hopefully people are doing that. And they're documenting what they did to meet the code, how the design supports the energy code with a certificate of compliance form, which either can, either can be the NRCC or LMCC LTI form using the prescriptive approach, or the NRCC or LMCC performance calculation if the lighting was included in a conditioned area. The certificate of installation form is used by the contractor out in the field verifying that what they installed meets the minimum promise of the Certificate of Compliance form. What's exciting about this new compliance process is the Certificate of Installation form will actually inform the contractor what is required for their scope of work. The Certificate of Acceptance forms are produced by the Certified Acceptance Test Technician who is doing functional testing of the lighting controls as dictated by the energy code and only then a certified acceptance test technician can provide the certificate of acceptance forms for indoor lighting projects. Certificate of verification forms are for HERS measures and there are no HERS measures for lighting alteration projects. At the end of the day, we want to get that certificate of occupancy. And by making sure all the compliance forms are made available on site for the installing, the building inspector, the better the project is going to go through this final process. The only forms that need to be collected by the local authority having jurisdiction or the building department is their certificate of compliance forms. All other forms are to be made available on site for the building inspector, but then provided to the building owner. Let's concentrate on that certificate of installation form. Now, in our previous code cycles, we were able to use paper forms to document the certificate of installation form. These are no longer a viable means of documenting the installation certificate and cannot be used for the 2022 code cycle. The tool that you're going to use for your certificate of installation forms, and you can also use it for your certificate of compliance forms as long as it's a non-residential or multifamily building utilizing the prescriptive approach, the virtual compliance assistant is a tool for you. It is available on the Energy Code Ace website, www.energycodeace.com, and it is available at no cost. Now, what's exciting about this new methodology associated with the Certificate of Installation Forms is the Virtual Compliance Assistant is going to pre-populate the specific installation form to the scope of work determined by the installing contractor utilizing this tool. I strongly suggest that people use this tool to determine what is an appropriate bidding uh, process associated with the project, what is required by the Energy Code at a minimum, and those compliance forms can sometimes be difficult to understand. So this is really bringing and condensing the information, only what that installing contractor needs to know. It's also a great method to get prepared for submittal reviews. But at the end of the day, what we need is that final certificate of installation form supporting the installed features of the building meet the promise of the certificate of compliance form. Now that certificate of compliance forms can either be a prescriptive form done via the virtual compliance assistant, or it could be a certificate of compliance form done via Energy Pro, a third party software choice that can be used to complete prescriptive forms and also be utilized to produce the performance reports. You can also use CBEC or IESVE to produce performance forms. CBEC 
and Energy Pro are the only two at this time that produce a compliance ID that we need to be able to document the NRCI form. You're going to want to make sure you have an account, and this account is where all of your forms are going to be maintained. It's also how you can tell Energy Code Ace what is it you do and what other information, classes, and tools you might be interested in as we start continuing to update our information for the 2022 code cycle to keep you up to date. Now, let's walk through an example of using the Virtual Compliance Assistant with this three-step process. The first step is to gather the appropriate material for the project. This is going to be receipts of lighting controls, lighting fixtures that are being installed, packing slips, approved submittals, anything that supports what is being installed for the project specific to that address. You are going to be needing the LMCC or LMCC form because you need a compliance ID that's going to be documented on those forms for the pre-population tool to have an appropriate with the virtual compliance assistant. If the compliance ID is not available, some point soon the virtual compliance assistant will have a tool that will help you walk through the process without a compliance ID. Once we've completed the certificate of installation form, we're going to confirm everything looks good. We're going to print that form, sign it, leave it on site for the inspector, and provide it to the building owner. Now, if you have to redo the certificate of installation form, let's say there are changes to the certificate of compliance forms for various reasons that happens during construction, we will have to start from scratch. You have to start a brand new certificate of installation form, use the brand new compliance ID associated with the revised certificate of compliance form. So you might have to come into the tool more than once, depending upon how you're going to utilize the tool. So let's start with uh, step one by gathering the appropriate material. So our example project is we're going to rewire 20 120 watt HID pendants within an existing conditioned warehouse. And we're going to replace those with 80 watt LED retrofit kit. Well, the contractor found an appropriate alternative, which was approved during the submittal review process, which was a 60 watt non-dimmable retrofit LED kit. And we're going to use the virtual compliance assistant NRCI tool to determine if this alternative is equal or better, hence appropriate in terms of how the energy code looks at compliance to these particular installed features. We won't have to worry too much about uh, controls because the existing controls associated with the project do meet minimum control requirements of the 2022 code cycle. So we just have to concentrate on the fixtures for this particular project. So we're going to want to make sure to have that NRCC LTI or if they use the performance approach for the lighting in the conditioned spaces, the NRCC PRF or LMCC PRF. Be aware that lighting in unconditioned spaces cannot be included in the performance calculation. So sometimes you're going to have two separate certificate of compliance forms, meaning you're gonna have two separate compliance IDs, and you're gonna document two separate certificate of installation forms for the lighting in the conditioned spaces versus the lighting in the unconditioned spaces. Here is our submittal approved that uh, supports our 60 watt LED retrofit kit. And we're going to make sure to have this on hand when we use it to fill out the information in the VCA. So we are going to grab that compliance ID, which is always going to be in the lower right hand corner of the certificate of compliance form. Do be aware you need to use all of these numbers, including the dashes for this to work appropriately. So let's go to the Virtual Compliance Assistant on the Energy Code ACE website and show you an example of how to do this example lighting alteration project in the VCA. Okay, so we're on the Energy Code ACE website. We're going to go to the Tools section of the website and start typing in the search bar Virtual Compliance Assistant. There are many ways you can find the Virtual Compliance Assistant, but this is one of my favorite ways. So we're going to go ahead and click, yep, we want to go into this tool, and we're going to get started. So you can either go through Start New Projects or My Projects. I'm going to go with My Projects, and you'll see you could start a new project here. Then I'm going to make sure I click the Installation Form as the form I'm working on. 
I do have that compliance ID that I have on the NRCC LTI form. And I'm going to name the project however you want to name it. Some people use project numbers, project names, project addresses. You do need to put in the project city and the zip code. The zip code helps the virtual compliance assistant identify the appropriate climate zone. We are doing the 2022 code cycle, and we're going to be documenting the LTI form. And here we're going to put in that compliance ID, including the dashes that we find in the lower right-hand corner of the Certificate of Compliance form. Now, the Virtual Compliance Assistant is going to be pooling up data. So there's going to be some pauses as we work through this, as this tool is working with us. We need to put in that permit number associated with the project that we should be able to find on the project documents, the authority having jurisdiction so we know we've got the right people who are going to be looking at this, the date of the permit set you used, and the date of as built. In this case, it was the same set. What is the scope associated with just you for our condition spaces? And here we're going to be documenting general lighting. It does ask us also what type of controls we are going to be documenting. You either can pick a few or none. Just what, what is in your scope of work? And we hit save to continue to our next steps. Now, this is the best part about the virtual compliance assistant here. It's pre-populated what was promised on the certificate of compliance form. We're saying, no, we did not put in this exact product. We're using an alternative product. And so we're going to have to say, no, it did not exactly match. And let me tell you what we're using so that this tool can, can determine whether what you're using is equal or better and that we're in a good place. So we put in the alternative information and uh, we hit save to continue. And now it's asking to document our controls. We didn't change anything regarding what was promised for controls, so we're good. And here it's telling us everything is good. You're equal or better. You are, uh, everything is green. I love going to the compass on the right-hand side. That gives me a nice quick snapshot of what's going on. And that's also where I can download the compliance form. Here I've downloaded the compliance form. I'm going to take a quick look to make sure it has everything I want it to and it's showing compliance. Then I'm going to move on to my next step of actually filling out some important information on the form, such as my uh, uh, address, such as my signature, and taking responsibility for documenting this form. And I'm also going to be collecting signatures of the responsible person. So now we're back, we've printed the form, we're now on step three. Step three is going to require that we have to put some additional information into the forms. Due to California's protection rights of you and personal information, the VCA will not collect address information nor direct contact information. So we're going to use some sort of PDF tool to be able to fill out the project address on each of these pages of the compliance form. And the very last page, we're going to make sure to sign as the documentation author, provide the appropriate address, city, zip code, and phone number, and then also collect the signature of the responsible person. This is the liability signature as dictated by the Business and Professions Code Division 3 typically will be the licensed installing contractor, though it can be the general contractor if the installing contractor is no longer available. Once we've collected all of these signatures, we are going to make sure to leave this on site for that building inspector before final and or submit it through their online system, such as San Francisco DBI. And we're also going to make sure that it's made available on site for the building owner. Remember, we at Energy Code Ace have many other things to help you with your job. Other tools of interest may be Reference Ace, which is the actual code language itself, with all the supporting documents by the Energy Commission. Q&A is a tool that you can use to find answers to common questions, what might be your questions. And if you can't find those questions, you can submit the question and get a subject matter expert to respond to your question, typically within 48 hours. We also have training. A lot of our classes are on uh, virtual online classes. We do, do have a more robust YouTube video series that we've supported in this code cycle. We hope to see you in one of our classes. We do have a series just for indoor lighting that will be coming available via our online classes. 
We also have resources. There are some great resources that support lighting and other building features associated with the energy code. We are still updating them for the 2022 code cycle, so a good reason to let us know when you sign up for your account what type of information you want to keep up on as it's released for this 2022 code cycle. So come join us at our website, www.energycodeace.com, because remember, this is a no-cost tool, resource, and training one-stop place for you to be able to keeping up with what code requires, how that affects you, what's expected of you, so that you can comply with the energy code.